Okay. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, September 16th, 2019 to order. Uh, Charlie, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Charlie. Um, we have two items that we need to officially add to the agenda, uh, the first of which was a recommendation from the uh, Guilford Public Works Commission related to uh, fees at the stump dump. Uh, can we, is there a motion to add that as 5A? So moved. Second. Uh, call the question on favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Uh, recusals. Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, second item uh, to add is an application for uh, the use of the green. I'd like to add that as uh, 15.4. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Recusal? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item two, public forum. Anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Hearing none? Oh. Come on up. Yeah, come yeah. on up to the table. Uh, name and address for the record, please. Yeah. Yeah, in front of the microphone, if you would, so they can pick it up for uh, GCTV. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, my name is Alyssa Stevens. I live at 12 Surrey Lane in Guilford, Connecticut, obviously. Um, I'm just here to speak in support of moving forward with the splash pad project. Um, I know that's an item on the agenda today. Um, I think that it would be a really great project for our town. I have two small children, um, a one-year-old who's very active and going to the beach or around pools or other bodies of water can be challenging with little kids. Um, so we've you know, gone to some of the other splash pads in the area, um, which is a little bit of a drive, um, and I think it would be a great asset to have in this town, and I think there's a lot of small children and families, um, kids with special needs who would really benefit from having this in our town. So I just want to speak in support of that. Good. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. Good morning. Um, my name is Heidi DeRusso. I live at 507 North Madison Road in Guilford, and I am here as well to just show my support for the splash pad in Guilford. Um, as a real estate agent, I sell a lot of homes in Guilford, and I think it'll add a lot to our community for people coming you know, out of state looking for a nice place to live. Um, it'll help with the children, obviously, keep them occupied outside. We all like to keep them outside, running out their energy. So, okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anyone else? We should address the board. Hearing none, let's move on to item three, and that's to approve minutes. Uh, three dot one would be the September third, two thousand and nineteen regular meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. second. Any comments, questions, additions, deletions, etc.? I had none. Go on. Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. 3.2, September 5th, uh, 2019, special meeting minutes, um, which was uh, to discuss, um, uh, public, it was actually public uh, hearing to obtain comment on the ordinance to amend the code uh, for building construction fees. Um, and any comments or questions? Or changes? None? Hearing none? Call the question. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item four, Police Chief Jeff Hutchinson. And he is going to uh, on address item 4.1 to consider and take possible action on rules and regulations to the town code of peddling and solicitation. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. How are you? Good. Um, as you know, uh, the board uh, had approved changes to Chapter 218 of the town ordinances peddling and soliciting. And part of that. Uh, ordinance uh, provides for recommendations from the police department police commission as well uh, reviewing rules and regulations to apply to that code uh, those were provided to you previously right. and I'm just here to make that recommendation and hope that uh, there's an approval on Good. that so we can essentially what it does is it it uh, clarifies and basically codifies um, the, the rules and regulations, regulations. around yeah around peddling, <laughs> around peddling. As it says, um, yeah. Chief, there was a little bit to do on some of the social <coughs> media when uh, we first announced the ordinance. Um, 
and there was concern that we were limiting the existing vendors. Uh, can you uh, address that, please? Nothing changes with regard to locations or numbers of people except, numbers of vendors, I should say, except as controlled by the Board of Selectmen on town properties. Um, so it doesn't change anything with regard to uh, public streets. The states still control state roads and um, any of the town roads as long as there's no, um, no issue with a, a traffic hazard. Um, Nothing changes there. But no, no change to the current uh, capabilities of the vendors to park. Correct. Where they where they are parking today. Correct. Thank you. And there's a process selecting where they park. Um, not for, not for, not for town roads, town owned roads on town properties. Um, they're provide there's provided for on the last section. I thought there was a permitting process. There's for the vendors. Well, oh, there's Even a permitting process. So that's what I mean. Selection that's what I process for location. No. Oh, yeah, there's a permitting yeah. process, which, again, hasn't changed. Yeah, no. Changed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Great. All right. Where did we leave that? Is, did we table it, or? No, we uh, changed the ordinance, and, um, and this is the rules and regulations related to the. Uh, I guess the I think the town attorney said they, it wasn't on the agenda, it so was we not had to come agenda, back. So we had to add this piece. Okay. Yeah. The ordinance we approved, but the rules and regs were. So we have to move this. Yes, please. I'll move. It. Second. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusal? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Uh, item five, uh, Friends of Hammond Asset, uh, Barbara Hansen, 5.1 is uh, here to uh, ask us to consider and take possible action on an application for variance from the noise control ordinance from the Friends of Hammond Asset for its Hammond Asset Festival taking place October 5th and 6th, 2019 at the Gilbert Fairgrounds. Do I have that right? Yes, you do. Wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Barbara Hansen. I represent Friends of Hammond Asset and I'm the chairperson of the Hammond Asset Festival. This is the ninth festival, but it's the fourth at the fairgrounds. Um, and we, the festival is to celebrate nature and Native American heritage. We do have some musicians and dancers. Um, we have a speaker system that's mentioned on the application. Um, we have um, vendors and exhibitors. Um, some wildlife shows, which are turtles and frogs, <laughs> and um, raptors too. But um, and the the dates are October fifth and sixth, and the times are um, Saturday on the fifth. It's from ten to six, and Sunday it's from ten to five. Wonderful. Anything substantially different than last no. year? No. Any issues last year after the and There were none that I know of. None that we heard of either. I heard yeah. positive reactions. Good. Yeah. As did I. Good. 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 Charlie, you want to move that? Yeah. I will move. move the approval. Mm -hmm. And a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Call the question all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Motion carries. And let's make sure we get out and support this event October mm -hmm. 5th and That's 6th. Right. right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Thank Good. you. Thank you very okay. much, Barbara. Thanks. Thank you. 5.A, uh, 5A rather, um, and that is uh, consider uh, a fee increase at the stump dump. Chairman Mark Barnes, nice to see you at the table. Nice to see you, Matt. And Tom, our Southern Gorge Director. Um, just want to give us a little background on uh, why, uh, how okay. this, this got uh, to this point. Got to this point because it seems to me like out of, out of town contractors are coming to our stump dump to dump because we're the cheapest around. Right. That doesn't take long to get that word around. And when we look at how much revenue we generate compared to what our costs are, we're falling way behind as far as getting this stuff ground up and keeping that place up to date. So we're not looking to put this across on the residents themselves, just on the commercial contractors. We're trying to limit them come in actually mm -hmm. I mean if, if we can <clears throat> get them to go elsewhere it'll help us out mm -hmm. substantially so the, go ahead mark our, with the basically our, our, our fees that we take in are roughly around thirty thousand dollars a year at the stump dump and it costs us in the vicinity of a hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain the stump dump by the time we pay for grinding and, and the maintenance mm -hmm. of the stump dump mm -hmm. um, and again, we, we look at what other towns charge and what other facilities charge. And it's all between 
12 to 15 dollars a yard to dump you know commercial containers 10 yard containers 20 yard containers 30 yard containers. <coughs> So we, you know, we thought that, you know, to be fair, we'd go to, you know, ten dollars a yard. We're not trying to be the highest, but we're just trying to more or less cover the cost. What are we at now? What's that? What are we at now? About a dollar. Dollar. Yeah. No wonder they come. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that yes, that's a yeah. substantial that's exactly increase. right. Yeah. And you know, um, what do other trying, towns charge? Um, some charge by the ton, sixty-five to ninety-five dollars a ton. Um, the the, the places of, that you That's can bring it to, like I said, charge between twelve to fifteen dollars a yard for the for the commercial containers. Okay. Uh, again, we're not trying to go after the guy who comes in on a pickup truck, clean up his yard. Mm -hmm. We're trying to just be more up to date with what other towns and facilities charge for the commercial contractors. And that will able to be controlled without any scales and all of that kind of. No, because it's going to be by the yard. Yeah, it's by the yard. Sure. And they just kind of guess. No, I mean we can get them. We can get them a poster that shows a ten yard, twenty yard. It's very, it's pretty easy to figure out a ten yard versus a twenty yard versus a thirty yard container. And that's basically what's coming in. I understand the container side, but I mean a lot of contractors are just going to have trucks too. Well, then, then you know if it's a, a mason dump, that will have a fee because we know that that's probably. Okay. So my point is, there is some system to identify it, approximately it, how many. And there's are. an attendant right there that's, that's uh, on board, and he's going to know what the fees and stuff are. Yeah. Just to let you okay. know, we had a guy dump a t uh, twenty yard dumpster, and he, after he dumped it, it looked like the twenty yard dumpster. Yeah. Right. That's how much stuff was packed into this thing. Yeah. So, well, you know, if you know, we're at a dollar, and other towns are at twelve to fifteen. I mean, there's no question. I mean, it seemed like a a large jump, but right. it sounds like we were just way off we for were too way long. Beyond. And the private individuals is not going to change whatsoever. No. no. If we want to discourage the commercial dumping, um, can we just have a rule against it? Well, it's been going on for yeah. quite a while yeah. now, and we do and we do time. have people in town here that, that have businesses that okay. have the containers. Okay. I want to just touch lightly briefly on uh, mm -hmm. the first comment was out of town haulers. Mm -hmm. Do they have a right to actually dump here? What what is our what are our bylaws or our requirements? Yeah. Say? Well, the, the the problem with that, Matt, is how I, I I looked at it, and you know Tom looked at it. How do you discourage it? It's it's basically landscapers right. that are doing work in Guilford, but they're also doing work in Madison, mm -hmm. right. the surrounding towns, right. and then that container ends up in Guilford. Mm -hmm. So by charging the the, the market rate, they'd right. be less likely if they're doing work in Clinton to drive all the way to Guilford. Well, and it won't we'll benefit them okay. anymore. Yeah. Right. right now it's a benefit. Exactly. exactly. And, and right. before it was benefiting them, so we're getting you know the guys who work in Madison and Brantford, they they end up coming into our pit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, it's it's more or less to, to cover our costs. Right. We know what our costs right. are to operate that facility, mm -hmm. and it's a, yeah. roughly around $100,000 a year. And that stump grinder that we rent the, right. uh, from Durham, or that we, we work with Durham on, yes. right? We wound up having to keep that over both the last couple of years. We've had to extend it because we have so much brush. Right. right. It's, it's been extended a week more okay. just to, to take care of our stuff. Okay. So the $30,000 that you collect now, that's based at a dollar? A yard, or there's other fees too. It all cars. It, oh, cars. It's, it's the random. The cars, it, it, it goes according to how much yeah. mm -hmm. so volume. My, they have. my question with it was, how much, how close, how how much more do you think it will go up with the new charge towards the offset? You, we're not trying to offset the whole one hundred thousand, but I just right. wondered. I think the thirty thousand is not going to be three hundred thousand. No, no, it's not no, going to be ten thousand. Yeah. We're not going to make money on this. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, I think there'll be a little gain there because the, some of the guys, yeah. because they're they're here, they'll do it. Right. But we're trying to discourage right. the outsiders yeah. from coming. Okay. Yeah. That's the point. So of it's it. not so much yeah. that we're going to get more revenue; right. it's to get less dumping. cut down the less volume, yeah. Yeah. the, the volume. amount of volume that we have in there at this point too. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, if we do get the volume, at least we'll have the money, money. Right. to cover. To cover it. Yeah, that's right. Good. But that goes into the general fund. So exactly. next year, when we raise our budget <laughs> a little <laughs> bit, we'll remember, we'll remember that. We'll remember. We'll remember. We'll remember. Yes, yes. <laughs> and if I forget, I'm sure I'll be reminded. Yes, yes. you will. <laughs> On that note, I'll move the question. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll second. And second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? 
hearing yeah. none, motion carries. Thank you very okay, much. Thank and you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing us to the 21st century <laughs> with, uh, with our rates. Okay. <laughs> Item six, Board of Ed Director of Operations, Cliff Gurnham. And Cliff's got a, a couple of items for us today. Uh, package it all together. That's it. Mm -hmm. Save a trip, right? Get all done over here. There you go. 6.1, discuss and take possible action on purchase of rental equipment for dehumidification and air conditioning for Baldwin Middle School until HVAC project is completed. Cliff, want to tell, tell us a little bit about that? Right. So from the beginning of the HVAC project for the Baldwin uh, school we knew we were on a very tight schedule even to get the building open on time they did that uh, they had the air handlers running however we knew that because of the uh, possible delays of getting the chiller getting it installed and all the piping that's associated with it that we may not have an air conditioning so obviously it was discussed with the Board of Ed it's been discussed with the Standing Building Committee um, we tried to hold off until we were certain that we would not be capable of getting that up and running within the first week or so of school. Mm -hmm. uh, when that was determined, we felt it was in our best interest uh, and the best interest of the school to bring in air condition to help uh, maintain the temperature in the building. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we brought it in, uh, obviously, kind of as an emergency uh, install. Um, so we do have a generator there, we have large air conditioners out back, uh, so you don't really see it visible from uh, when you drive up to the school, it's all kind of behind the scenes. So uh, we have been able to cool all the major areas of the building, the media center, the commons, and the majority of the classrooms. Uh, so obviously this helps in two ways, because one, it, it cools and tempers the air. Yeah. Uh, but it also helps maintain uh, humidity, which is critical. Obviously, we don't want any issues with mold, mold. or uh, any of that. So uh, it's worked quite well. So um, we uh, we're requesting uh, it will probably be four weeks of air conditioning. Okay. Uh, the original uh, PO was for two weeks to get us up and running. Right. Uh, but we will probably be asking for additional two weeks uh, probably until the beginning of October, then we'll feel comfortable with removing it unless we see that there's going to be no more uh, extended uh, warmer mm -hmm. days. Good. I have two questions. Um, one, uh, what budgetary allocation are you using for this? This is part of the overall project? It is, yes. And, okay. Uh, so there's room within uh, the original project to, to accommodate this? Correct, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. And the second thing is you guys uh, had made, the Board of Ed made a decision that this was sort of an emergency purchase and you're asking us to approve this uh, after the fact? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll move. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, recuses, hearing none, motion carries. Uh, 6.2, um, obviously a related item. Uh, consider and take possible action to approve change order number three for the Baldwin HVAC pro, uh, project. Right. And this is, uh, as you said, goes hand in hand with the air conditioning. So <coughs> as part of the project, um, we are installing a large chiller that will supply the entire building when the project phase one and two is complete uh, right now. When it comes online, it will just do about half the building. The chiller itself is located uh, a good distance away from the boiler room, and we had a, a bunch of challenges trying to determine how to get the piping uh, from the chiller to the boiler room, which is buried in the center of the building. So uh, the initial design was to try to run the piping outside and hang it on the side of the building. Um, it, it really uh, both aesthetically and design-wise wasn't ideal. Uh, we then reviewed bearing the pipe uh, under the ground from the chiller to the boiler room. Uh, that price tag was about a hundred to hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars mm. above and beyond the existing contract. Right. So uh, we decided against that and went for uh, a third layout and that was to put it uh, running up onto the roof across the roof and then down uh, and it actually works out pretty well because we have uh, a chase uh, access from the roof straight all the way down basically three stories into the boiler room uh, so it gets us there uh, kind of directly indirectly directly uh, and works out well so uh, there was a change order and that's what we're here today to review uh, it was reviewed by the standing building committee and approved and recommended 
the change order was twenty eight thousand sixty eight dollars and seventy six cents. Why wasn't this recognized in the original design? Uh, we thought uh, again we could put it outside along the ground, uh, but again aesthetically you're going to have massive pipes, uh, both mm -hmm. electrical and. Uh, well, I understand that, but I mean didn't change from the original design to now that it would be aesthetically and everything else. It well, just well, seems like a decision like... When they really got into hanging the um, pipe on the exterior of the building, uh, a lot of questions came up and concerns structurally that the building wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, some... Okay. It just seems like, you know, it's right. $28,000 that, you know, all of the questions that came up seemed to would have existed prior. I mean, I just don't understand why it wasn't addressed they do their in best, the original design. Yeah, they do their best to engineer it. However, the means and method of how to actually hang it onto the structure of the building, uh, when they got further into that after the bid and, and before they did the install, it really was becoming much more extensive. Uh, and there was concerns, again, that the brick face would not be able to maintain the support of that uh, weight of that uh, piping. Would it be fair to assume that the original design uh, was considerate of cost, so they did it the most cost-efficient way, as opposed to perhaps the most uh, yeah, I know, effective way? Well, we're paying way. the price right. now anyway. Well, I mean, yeah, we, have, we would have paid it then, right. or we pay it now. Right. 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 We tried to do it the least expensive way that, mm -hmm. at the time, with the engineering and the plans, uh, without tearing up, you know, the inside of the wall and mm -hmm. getting further into structural. Yeah. Uh, to do it the least expensive way, and it unfortunately yeah. does not look like that would be the best way. That's right. Okay. It's less than two percent of the cost but of, still, of the, just the contract. Yeah. yeah. To put it in perspective. Um, it's a cl classic problem with municipal bidding. Well, you know, right. just my, municipal projects, right? my history of building project change orders are not my favorite thing. <laughs> right. uh -huh. Nor mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do move it along. I'll move it. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. 6.3. Discuss and take possible action. <coughs> Excuse me. To approve the award of uh, A&E services for design of Board of Ed offices in the 595 New England Road building through the on-call uh, A&E bid. So uh, this is a up and coming <coughs> project that we're obviously just starting to get into. Mm -hmm. We've done some prelim preliminary work uh, looking at the uh, second floor of 595, as, as you well know, uh, back uh, in 2015, we renovated the lower level mm -hmm. of the building to create the fitness center, uh, put in some mechanicals, boilers, all that stuff. Uh, however, now we're looking at the second floor, which is about 10,000 square feet. We did schematic designs uh, using Silver Petroselli and Associates underneath the on-call uh, bid. Uh, we are able to accommodate all the required offices uh, for the entire Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. So as you're well aware, uh, the Board of Ed is located presently in three different locations. So we have the Lathrop House down here on the green. Mm -hmm. We have our IT department down at Calvin Leap in Portables. Mm -hmm. And we have my office along with the business office and other uh, human resources mm -hmm. up at uh, next to the high school at 701 New England Road. So we're kind of spread out working remotely from each other. So uh, the goal was to bring everybody together into one building so we can work uh, more closely. So uh, we looked at the schematic design. We were able to pull all those offices into one space. So we have the schematic design. We'd like to take it to CDs, construction documents. Uh, again, we're still doing the work underneath the on-call services, so we're not going out to bid. Um, and this would give us a really firm understanding of how much it's going to cost right. to do the work. Yeah. In an ideal situation, if everything goes according to plan, what would be the timing of having all three locations of Board of Ed into this building? Uh, if we push to get to the CDs, I um, would expect it would take CDs anywhere from three to six months to get the CDs completely done, and then we could start construction soon after that. So at least a year to get us into the building, uh, we do need certain So programs. a year or two, mm -hmm. right. foreseeable. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ideally, I know the superintendent would love to be there in the fall, uh, <laughs> even if it was, you know, late fall, but 
and I and I want to play for the Red Sox. Too. Yeah, there's a lot of things we have. <laughs> well, I just you know we're in the facilities discussion, so I just want a timing mindset. Yeah, right. so we are uh, the facilities department. The board of facilities department has already started uh, demolition demolition of the building itself. So within the building, we're tearing out the old cabinets from the science rooms, uh, removing any necess unnecessary plumbing, piping, electrical, uh, those types of things. Uh, ceiling tiles will all come down, the ceiling grids, uh, flooring will come up. So we'll prep the building over the next six months as much as we can to reduce the cost of construction, um, you know, when we go out to bid. Okay. And, and there's going to be a significant price tag associated with the uh, the completion of that work, uh, right. and it yeah, will also be a big deal right. to get that done. And it's also yeah. going to dovetail with the it dovetails with the facilities uh, task force that's currently out there because there's a possibility of three facilities then opening up for other ten. Well, years. one of them is so, portable, so yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. eliminating right. portable. Right. Right. Eliminating. Mm -hmm. exactly. So there'll be no continued need at all for the two buildings. Not necessarily. They, for example, the um, Central Office North, the one I'm in, which is 701 New England Road, uh, would re be repurposed for the uh, maintenance department. So right now the maintenance department uh, is in several different locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we presently have a trailer up at Baldwin located on the blacktop where they play gym. Uh, that houses our plumbing and electrical departments. Um, so our grounds department doesn't really have a location. They work a little bit out of the Cox remote site. Uh, but they keep their trailer and a lot of their equipment up at CO North now. So we'd be able to condense, get rid of that trailer, open up that playground. Uh, so some of those things would be repurposed. So just, you just said this, but just to be clear, the, um, the 595 is the one on the corner. The 701 is the one on the corner. 701 is the one on okay. the corner. 595 then, is the old science one. Yes, right. yes. Um, so 701 already, there's already a plan to use that for other school purposes, Correct. specifically maintenance Correct. location. Mm -hmm. Maintenance and um, storage. So right now, we have a lot of stuff stored, obviously, at 595. So we'll do a swap. It'll be storage slash maintenance building. Yes. So, you know, Lathrop House would be turned back over to the town. Um, and then uh, the portables would still be maintained down at... Uh, Calvin Leet uh, for storage because we actually need a lot of storage for uh, files and things of that nature. We can't use it for students um, just because it's not adequate. So they also use it for professional <coughs> development. They have a uh, conference room, uh, conference room down there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so for this project at budget season in the spring, do you think you'd be coming forward with a request for funding or? I, I know that uh, yes. yeah. that's the uh, hope is to get to that. That's the timing of it yeah. all. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So again, we're looking for approval for forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars for Silver Petroselli and Associates okay. to do CDs. Well, I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. 6.4, consider and take possible action to contract with integrated technical system for work on the Board of Ed Canvas system. Good. So as you know, we're constantly moving forward trying to uh, improve our security uh, and the safety of the students. Uh, we were in, in the spring, I believe it was, and requested funds to do a camera system, upgrade our camera system at Calvin Leap. That work has been completed. Um, so that building is done. Uh, the next building in our uh, schedule is to move on to Melissa Jones and improve the cameras up there throughout the school, both interior and exterior. Uh, that is what this request is for. We have two primary um, certified companies that do work on our systems uh, nationwide and uh, ITS. And uh, we got proposals from both of those. The proposals were reviewed by the Standing Building Committee, and the Standing Building Committee recommended moving forward with ITS because they were the lowest of the two bidders mm -hmm. in the amount of $21,600. Okay. And this was part of the overall plan three or four years ago? Correct, security. for upgrading mm -hmm. our security. Yep. So yes, Good. we have funds in our security Good. bonds to All cover this. planned. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, anyone want to move it? Yeah. Move. I'll move that. Second. Any further discussion? 
Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Accusers? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. <coughs> Item seven. Finance Director Mary Jane Malavasi. Uh, 7.1 is received the monthly report. Good evening. This is our dry run before the uh, Board of Finance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, first thing on our list is revenues. Um, as you can see um, from what I provided it for the revenues this morning, um, we're actually at the same collection rate as last year, just with um, a couple little tweaks. Uh, just uh, make note that you'll see the finance department there, the percentage of collection there um, represents the increase in our budget and more adequately represents where we are in, in the year, uh, as opposed to last year when it showed we were already 75% collected. Uh, the other thing I'd like to know is in the tax collection area, um, it appears that we're much higher than last year. If you remember last year at this time, yeah. we were shorthanded, and, and I reported mm -hmm. we had not been um, up to date with our postings uh, this time last year. So the 54% where we are this year more uh, adequately represents where we typically uh, typically are uh, at this point through the year. You'll see a lot of the other departments um, are a little higher than last year, um, and you know some a little bit lower, but overall uh, we're yeah. Right on track. Any specific questions? No, no. I'm good. Uh, on the expense side, uh, or just slightly um, more than we were at this time last year. Uh, however, all of the departments uh, appear to be right on line about where they were last year at this time. I will note that human services um, is almost 100% uh, expended at this point, and that's really uh, timing on how quickly the agencies request their funding um, from us. So yeah. this year they're coming in, uh, they, they came yeah. in right away, got many of them right in July. Uh, so uh, obviously that, that budget um, will hit 100%, and, and that's the end of that budget anyway. Um, but uh, o overall, uh, just about where we were last year at this time. Um, our, our debt retirement is at 50% at 50, at 50 and our principal, that uh, was the interest and our principal is at 105% uh, uh, already because we have already um, expended our principal and the overage there represents the credits mm -hmm. uh, that will come in um, from savings. Questions on uh, expenditures? No. All right. Medical? Or where do you want to go next? Sure, warrants, medical. Warrants? warrants or? Unless you have any specific questions on warrants? No. No. Medical? Uh, so, under medical, I will note that uh, you'll see in the month of August uh, we had claims of only 255,000 but if you look through the year, the year before you'll see that we always have a catch-up period where they're cleaning up one year um, and, and catching up so last year we had a very low July and um, a very high August uh, I anticipate that that you'll see that jump in September um, once those uh, adjustments have been made we have not reached any uh, catastrophic claims that have um, come up to our uh, $75,000 uh, watch um, minimum. So once the thing, once any specific claim hits 75, we start to watch that, and then anything over 150 is, is covered by um, the catastrophic claims. Uh, you'll see this year it's uh, $1.7 million we anticipate there. Um, on the, the revenue side, you'll see that in July and August, the town and the Board of Ed made their full contributions, um, and we would anticipate that throughout the year. And our other revenue is uh, slightly higher, and uh, that's uh, employee contributions. Employee contributions um, mm -hmm. People on uh, 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 Cobra, I'm sorry, couldn't think of the word. <laughs> those, uh, those types of um, of things a little bit higher. So um, 
already this year we um, are showing an anticipated surplus of $1.2 million, but keep in mind that, that our claims that. are yes. much lower this, yeah. this month than uh, we should see that cut into that disappear. for next right. year. Yeah. Maybe not disappear, but cut into it significantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And item 8.2, uh, Mary Jane's going to be addressing what do we do with that uh, sizable surplus. Yep. So, uh, Anything further? Yep. Okay. Uh, 8.2. Uh, 8.2, the first no, not 8.2, 7.2, I'm sorry. 8.2, I was just following along with you. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, the first uh, memo you have for me is indeed the transfer from, uh, requested transfer from the Internal Service Fund, which is our uh, self, uh, our, our self-funded uh, medical plan. We do have a $5 million surplus as of the end of 2019. Uh, we have had many discussions as to how much money should stay in that fund. At a m bare minimum, we would want to see at least two months of total expenditures, um, and we have, uh, you know, that would be at least two million dollars. Uh, as I've spoken to in the past, I am requesting a transfer from this fund into our OPEB reserve currently uh, in our fund balance. Uh, my request is for a million dollars. What is the reserve at now? $200,000 that we put in last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last, last year was a starting point. It was point. just a yeah. starting yeah. point. Actually, yeah. Yeah. That was where we started the discussion right. of the possibility uh -huh. of the trust fund and now right. the Board of Finance has given their approval to move forward with that plan. Right. So, so. This, with this transfer, it would be one and a quarter million. Right? Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, begun the process of actually uh, um, starting to establish that trust. Uh, we're working with uh, our bond council, um, Shipman and Goodwin, uh, and we had a meeting that was scheduled for or later today, but needed to be postponed for uh, for a reason. But um, and the anticipation is that this will actually be a full a full blown trust. Uh, just like the pension trust, mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, it would be managed by the pension committee. Um, so they would they would pick up the responsibility for managing can, that. Can as well. you refresh for the audience what the the, the total yeah. or the goal total of this fund might be? Well, the current liabilities I think are set around twenty eight million. Is that the number I remember from the last yes, audit? Yes, that's um, the audited. Uh, amount. Right. But Once we establish the trust, that number will come down yeah. um, because we're able say. to use different right. assumptions. Um, our actuaries are actually working on those numbers. Right. Okay. So um, we don't have a number. Correct. Or, I, I, I don't uh, want to give right. a number at this point. Mm -hmm. The actuaries are working on that. Mm -hmm. And as I discussed, I believe it was at the last meeting, uh, we would be looking at a laddered uh, phase in right. of our. Okay. Required contributions so that we didn't go from zero to, well, with to this whatever. Transfer, yeah. it'll, it'll, it's a yeah, it's, it's a just jump start. Reality. It's a jump okay. start. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. And again, we'll be building this fund before we actually use it. So the idea right. is for the fund so the to thing. grow and mm -hmm. and and make itself you know, so self-sustaining, just, right? just like need, a pension fund. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you right. need individual motions on these? Or um, I, I just have one more question. About I'm sorry. This. Um, we're at five million. Two million is got to stay right. um, so that's theoretically three million and you're you're suggesting one million which I am I'm totally for this I'm just wondering because I know it comes up at budget time with mm -hmm. some of our citizens do you think we should put a little bit more or do we have other ideas with some of these this other funds maybe I'm I mean, I'm just wondering if we should put one. One, one of the cha one of the challenges with using the health insurance account yeah. is that the that account is established for the benefit of the employees, and there are contributions made by the employees into that fund uh, as well. So the use of those funds to ostensibly pay roads or to build yeah. uh, something at the, the the new offices at the high school uh, it raises some questions as to whether or not we have the authority to use that okay. money for those purposes. It is it has been confirmed that using it for other employee benefits is in fact an appropriate mm -hmm. use of those funds. Right, because at the moment right. all of our right. other post-employment benefits are being cut, paid through that fund. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Sandy's right. point is should we do more? Yeah, I, well, I sort of did two yeah. things on right. it. Right. So you've answered right. one, one, but then mm -hmm. 
and the other the other thing is Mary Jane, who uh, usually she's the one that cautions me to be more conservative. Um, the two million dollar number is the low end of the range mm -hmm. of the recommendation of uh, our insurance consultants, um, who have said anywhere from. Yeah, two to three times your monthly uh, outlay. Mm -hmm. So our, we're currently our consultants at actually don't think we are under overfunded, um, you know, but they're a little bit more mm -hmm. cautious. I would recommend <coughs> looking at this, you know, each year. Mm -hmm. and, right. you know, and and listen, yeah. and we're quite honestly, it was seven, seven or eight years ago, Charlie. Mm -hmm. This fund was underwater, right. uh, yeah. and so there are well, some we've we've enjoyed. Uh, you know, a, a mm -hmm. very, very good uh, experience in that account over the past few years, mm -hmm. which means that most of our employees have not had to use that uh, because the nature of the way we do self-insurance. And to Sandy's point, we haven't got a recommendation of what this fund should be. Yeah, you know, when we have that, and yeah. I mean, if I mean, it's five million, we're there. on a nice track. If right. it's twenty million, we got a be mm -hmm. more aggressive. aggressive right? I mean, simply we can always do more, but we right. can't go the other way yeah. if we need right. it back here. So, yeah. I'm keeping it at a million the is, is sensible. The town and the board collectively put almost a million dollars into this fund just mm -hmm. to bring it whole. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and that's, a, that's a very good point. Uh, it's almost as if we're paying ourselves back with mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the loan that the, the, the two entities made seven years ago. I'm I think, Charlie, to your question, I think we should take it in two, uh, two separate okay. I'll motions. move this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Excusals? Hearing none? Motion carries. Thank you. And my other me memo refers to our estimated uh, surplus for fiscal year ending 2019. Uh, we do anticipate close to a $2 million sur surplus made up primarily of increased <coughs> revenues and some transfers that we have put into on the expenditure side. <coughs> when we look at the percentage of our un unassigned fund balance, which is our rainy day fund, so to speak, that we could use for any purpose, um, our policy has us keeping 5 to 10 percent um, in that fund. In order to keep it at, at the 10 percent rate, we would need about $265,000 surplus um, this year and most likely most years moving forward a, a similar uh, amount. That being said, there still le leaves a con considerate amount that um, could be transferred. Uh, so it is um, my recommendation working with Matt uh, to transfer funds into six specific accounts, some which already exist and some which are new. Um, like I can go through each yes, one. Um, the first is fund balance committed to reval. You've heard me say it before. Um, we do have a full reval coming up. Our assessor has estimated that um, anywhere from the very high 300s up to 425,000 um, on the high. That estimate came to me um, over a year ago, so I'm recommending the full 425,000 because, as we know, you know, <laughs> it's most likely going to be on the higher end. Uh, so 425000 off the bat um, for a specific expenditure that we know for sure we will have over the next couple of years. Which, which means it won't have to come out of the operating, any of the operating budgets over the next couple of years to build that fund Correct. or all of it in one fiscal year. What year is that? I believe the work starts next year, next fiscal year. Uh, the next um, is also a, a new is a new line item, uh, fund balance committed to future facility projects. Uh, I have four hundred thousand in there. Uh, that number is derived from estimates that um, the um, facilities director has provided for um, the demolition, demolition to of 52, Church 52 Church Street, Church Street um, for when we move forward um, with that job and also some additional funding to help cover the engineering costs of the work you just heard Cliff Gurnham talk about regarding um, the uh, property at the high school. Um, so we've put some money in for that as well. So those are two projects we know that were, are, are coming forward and this is just providing um, a, a jump start to, to those expenditures. So just to, to, because we're using the word facility with our committee that's underway this is not for that no. committee so no for ultimately we would we would have to approve no. it, but this is for 
existing um, projects that have been identified through our facilities director. Correct. There is there is a small reserve already um, for the facility yeah. um, committee to use um, during their work. This is specifically for projects um, that would come out of that committee um, and, and filter through um, you know, our department. So we already know we have Church Street um, and, the, and the new Board of Ed offices. So, mm -hmm. so that's just to, to help with those projects. Um, the, the next is a new line item, fund balance committed to coastal resili resiliency. We have $200,000 um, in that line item. Uh, coastal resiliency is um, uh, an initiative that many of the coastal towns are looking into. Um, and we felt that it was important for us to also uh, put some money aside for that. Uh, let's see, fund balance committed to future road projects, um, $400,000. Uh, we have some large projects <coughs> coming forward for us, and this is just a way to help minimize um, future bonding costs. This could possibly cover some of the engineering. Yeah, and, it, it, and, and addition, Additionally, we've identified some uh, road projects, spe very specific road projects that need to be done. Um, we have not invested as significantly as we should have in terms of our road projects over the past few years, uh, either with chip sealing or reconstruction of certain roads. Um, so this gives us the opportunity uh, to, to do something. I met last week with uh, our town engineer and director of public works, and we've identified a priority list of uh, road projects, um, many of which would probably fit within uh, the, the number that you're looking at here. Uh, the next one is to add to an assigned to continue to enforce line item. The $16,000 represents the amount that we had set aside in the park and recreation budget for the purchase of the next senior bus. Uh, that has not happened yet, mm -hmm. so we are setting this money aside. So um, I, I believe we it's just We just got approval last yeah, I was week. Gonna say, uh, I think I just this, saw an email. From, from the state, <laughs> yep. uh, the state mm -hmm. funds 80 percent of the cost of the bus. right so this we are just holding those funds mm -hmm. from last year so when that happens we can um, cover our cost right. our, our portion of the cost of that that bus and the last item um, is three hundred thousand dollars to add to the restricted to future debt payments line item that we currently have in our fund balance as we um, move forward with some of our um, bonding projects now they're as we bond, we're bonding smaller dollars um, now that the school is done. Our credits that we're receiving, our premiums are lower, um, and they have helped <coughs> us mitigate some of the peaks. And so I'm just suggesting that we add to that so that we can continue to level out those budget increases <coughs> um, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, no, good. Um, one of the ideas here, we, we will hear and we'll have discussions with the Board of Finance and the Board of, some members of the Board of Finance in the past have suggested that we utilize surplus to offset uh, tax increases uh, at the time of uh, during budget season. Um, these projects are all projects that will need to be done at some point or another uh, over the next several years. Um, so the idea here is to not add additional layers of taxes to cover these projects. Mm -hmm. So this is in effect the same effect that will be uh, of, of uh, um, not burdening the taxpayers any further. Correct. So instead of adding those items mm -hmm. to our budgets over the next couple of years, <coughs> the funding will already be here set aside for those projects, right. which again, as Matt said, are projects we know exist. We know exist. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, not, we're not putting money away for what ifs. These are all projects. And the other point I want to make is Mary Jane noted uh, we are at the top end of our range in terms of uh, unassigned fund balance. Um, and however, these funds are still in uh, our fund balance, our overall fund balance until such time as we use them. So we just came through this past uh, late summer. Uh, a, a series of discussions with the rating agencies and the ratings agencies look at the total fund balance as uh, as one of the measures. So this money is still uh, on our books as as an asset, regardless of whether it's in unassigned or assigned. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the funds cannot be used unless I come back to you for 
to the Board of Selectmen yeah. and the Board of Finance, Board of Finance right. um, for their use, uh, just like we did last month with a couple of the transfers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so these funds, it's about a million seven in total. Mm -hmm. These items are generally of a budgetary nature where they could have been in past budgets, like yeah. the revaluation, and we didn't do it. Do it Correct. Right. Or they could be in future budgets for years when we decide to go ahead with some of these things. I have the sense that we're making budgetary decisions outside of the budget process a little bit, and I'm not totally comfortable with that. Okay. So is there a different way I should be looking at that? Um, I think. Your, your point is well taken, but as Mary Jane just mentioned, in order to expend those funds, there is a process that has to happen. It comes back through us, and it also goes through the Board of Finance. The Board of, Board of Finance would be the authority, on uh, ultimate authority, on releasing these funds. Um, okay. This is just a maybe the first step out of a five-step process, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and we can. And consider by the way, not every decision is made at budget time. In relative to expenses, we saw, you know, we we see projects come along during the course of the year that we add to the to the process to to the to mm -hmm. okay, my, for our approval. I mean, my perception is that the money exists in the undesignated fund balance, and we're simply dividing that balance into these other sets, mm -hmm. and it, it it literally still remains in an undesignated fund. Except these are designated, you know, but to actually spend them, just as to spend money out of the other fund, we have to decide. Right. And they can be discussed the during the, the budget process. Um, you know, what we do with our debt payments is we we put in the full expenditure of our debt payments, and then we we budget the use of, of the credit. So that actually. That's an example of how it does indeed go through our budget process. Mm -hmm. All right. To mm -hmm. Susan's point, if one of these we decide not to do. Is there any anything prohibiting nope. us from we putting roll it back, back. rolling right back, back in? We can roll it back in or So this is simply taking a piece of the undesignated fund and saying, okay, these six things are sort of funded if right. Mm -hmm. right. If mm -hmm. a reflection or attention evaluation is not an if, it's a yeah. when. Mm -hmm. I mean it's gonna the, your, your point's well taken in, in terms of transparency. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. But these are these are all items, all projects that we've talked about. For instance, revaluation. Agreed. All right. Mm -hmm. We made we consciously as a board made a decision mm -hmm. that we weren't going to fund right. it out of the operating budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we have to you know the obligation was on us mm -hmm. to find it. Right. So we knew at right. least for that project that this day was going to come because we used to budget every year mm -hmm. a certain percentage of what that cost mm -hmm. was, and we've made a conscious decision not to do that through the operating budget to mm -hmm. wait and to right. use um, fund balance. So that was a budgetary decision mm -hmm. um, that over one, the last you know few years. Agreed. And that one's a given for yeah, me. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we need to do that. It's just my and recommendation. Yeah, yeah, one, one, yeah, one other point is where do we typically go when it comes to budget season? Capital. Capital projects, right? Yeah. That's true. Uh, so this, That's true. this is a in effect, a capital sinking fund, uh, or mm -hmm. a series of capital sinking funds. Mm -hmm. so. Well, yeah, in my mind, With the exception it, of the future debt payments. But. It's still a non-designated fund, you know, but we're giving some specific direction of what our intentions are. I mean, we're not doing it per se. We could just leave the money in the fund. And, Mm -hmm. When we make the decision individually, on. so how are we? How do we benefit by doing this now instead of just leaving it undesignated and waiting to see when things come up? Is there a downside of doing it that way, um, or just that it leaves that exposed to the the comment that it's too high? I, I think what it's uh, what it will do is it gets us the opportunity to have a conversation with the board of finance that they agree that these are projects and these are areas where we need to focus on, and okay. they're committing to it as well. Yeah. It gives some credibility okay. to these projects. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it it demonstrates to the Board of Finance and the public that this is a direction that, you know, that we are going, you know, and when we decide to go, it'll yeah. come back to the mm -hmm. right. okay. And also that, you know, the perception, if you read in the paper that the town ended up with a $2 million surplus, and then you don't hear anything further. You think, oh, great, they collected $2 million more than we really needed to collect. And in effect, we don't even know if we're ever going to have a surplus. We just, it, it just happens over the year as the revenues come in. Mm -hmm. But 
we're looking at how to make the best use of that money back into projects that are going to co that are going to cost money and come from somewhere. So, right. mm -hmm. and during the budget process, we work to mitigate that by adjusting the finance revenue yeah. line item, um, for example, so that we would not have that additional. So right. We have through the budget process absorbed that um, increase um, and tax mm -hmm. less in the, in the current year. Yeah, are you comfortable that we're not actually making decisions relative oh, to these projects at this point? Yes, is, except that I think it's it happened in the past that something does come up and we say, oh, that's already committed, so it's right. you know fine, no further right. questions are needed. Right. So well, it, I, it does. And I think the distinction, uh, maybe, maybe not much of a distinction, is that we are not approving the projects, but we are approving conceptually that this is something mm -hmm. we want to do and we are allocating funds in the event that we decide as a body and with the Board of Finance to move forward on those projects. Right. And for instance, if you look at the fund balance committed to future facilities projects, we know we know where we think we might use that yeah. four hundred thousand, but if the roof caves in on town hall today, yeah. that money it's it, available. You, you, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So we've been specific yet vague. <laughs> I don't you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so that we you know that funding is there um, for what uh, Whatever project this board and the board of finance deems you know necessary at, at the time. This is the plan for the money, barring unforeseen circumstances. Correct. And, okay. and, and I'm going to suggest also that in our discussions with the rating agencies, this is the exact kind of financial analysis and planning that they like to, see, like to see because it suggests that we are looking past uh, current operating budgets, that we are mm -hmm. doing some planning longer term planning and uh, and putting monies aside and identifying uh, opportunities to pay for it. Got it. So yeah, and that I, comes up every year in our, mm -hmm. in our I will add ratings calls. Okay. Specifically the OPEB yep, funding OPEB was, huge. Oh, was okay. a critical um, component to our rating agency calls and um, you know we last year we were able to speak about the possibility of moving mm -hmm. forward with a fund. This year we were able to say we are moving forward mm -hmm. um, even though it was not in place yet and um, you know, that, I think that was a critical component um, to our rating agency. Would you not agree, Matt? I would. I would. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to move this chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At some point, we got to do it. Are you there? Yeah. I'm there. You're there? I'm okay. fine. Okay. Right. Would you like to second it, Susan? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe not all the way there. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there's no further discussion, let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stand recuses. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 8, Town Engineer Janice Blasiak. Uh, 8.1 would be to discuss and take possible action on the award of bid number 1-1920 on call construction of concrete sidewalks. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Good. So we, um, we put this uh, on-call contract out um, to bid, and uh, we received two bids. Um, I think I included what we received back. Um, and they ended up being higher than our current <laughs> pricing, unfortunately. But um, the one thing is, is we did um, add a number of items into the bid document that we feel are necessary in order to perform a lot of this work, which was missing from the prior bids um, that was in place. and. Um, Looking at um, what we use, utilize the most, obviously, is um, this actual sidewalk replacement and some of the first uh, five or six items that are listed on the bid summaries. Um, and so analyzing that to kind of what we did this past year for sidewalk work and placing these uh, values from each bidder, at, um, I would suggest that William M. Layden uh, would be the low bid uh, from a, a best value standpoint for the town recommend that we award um, this contract to them. Okay, I got to ask this question about, are they are these two companies related? <laughs> um, I believe they're cousins, cousins. in some way. But oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so they're all in the same, okay. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> kind of split off a few years back, I think. Okay, all right. So it's all logical that they have the same, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and what was uh, what was our existing uh, our cost? current pricing for sidewalk for four inch thick sidewalk is nine dollars a square foot. So we're ten percent increase. Okay, I'll move it. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? 
Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Refuses? Hearing none. Motion carries. 8.2. Consider and take possible action to waive the purchasing policy. Three quote requirement and contract with Mark DeAngelis Inc. to repair 12 paver crosswalks around the green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've taken a walk around, you've noticed that we're having a problem. Drive around. <laughs> <laughs> it's more hazardous to the walkers, now is, unfortunately. Now, is this going to be, uh, how old are those crosswalks? Yeah. I mean, they, they seem like yesterday, they're but they're probably ten, five. Guys. They're about yeah. 10 years ten old. 10 years yes. old. Yes. So oh, I did okay. contact the um, Nikolak, who was the, um, the supplier for the actual pavers, to try and understand what's going on <laughs> um, and their answer was well we don't um, warranty these for a commercial use and it's a commercial use being in the roadway so I'm like okay but this is kind of ridiculous in my opinion so I did uh, have a lot of back and forth with them and they um, finally they um, have provided us with one pallet which we believe will be enough of the material for what needs to be replaced free of charge so I was able to at least the get the same it. product yeah uh, yes. So they don't original. have any conversation about, they don't recommend this product for commercial use, no. but we're using it in a commercial <laughs> yeah. place, so. Right, and I, I think, I, quite honestly, I think this is going to be a, a short-term, you know, not a short-term, but a fix for now, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to monitor this and come up with a long-term plan, I think, for these crosswalks. I, I, uh -huh. I suspect we're going to continue to see the same type of deterioration of the, the other pavers that may not get replaced right now. Sure. Kind of and, and Ten years, not the end of the world. Well, no, yeah. no. Yeah. And also, there's some question. It may not necessarily be the pavers themselves. It's the construction and the drainage because yeah. it's the oh. it's the you know uh, freezing yeah. and thawing yeah. and yeah. freezing yeah. and thawing. You're talking salt and yeah. plowing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of abuse. Yeah. It's a yeah. road surface. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. DeAngelis um, is willing to jump on this project right away, and um, you know we hope to have it. Completed, you know, before winter sets in. And yeah. It's starting to become an eyesore. Yeah. Now, so mm -hmm. I'll move this yeah. one too. Yeah. And his and his price was significantly better than either of the two because that was an alternate in the original bid. Was price the, per uh, square foot. Price the, per square foot uh, was an alternate <coughs> in the uh, the original bid, uh, and we have the approval of uh, purchasing that we can split the bid uh, into. We can split the bid, take some. Uh, of of the original. Uh, well, we'll still utilize their unit pricing, pricing if need be for paver replacement, if it's associated with some other, you know, sidewalk yeah. project. But for this particular, we're kind of segmenting this yeah. out as a, sp a specific project to mm -hmm. just get the repairs made. Okay, I'll move this one. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those abstaining accusers. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't move. <laughs> yeah, stay right there. Item 9, 9 .1, uh, Economic Development Coordinator Brian McGlone, 9.1 is to discuss and take possible action on parking license agreement between St. George Catholic Church and the town of Guilford, subject to town meeting, and uh, Connecticut General Statutes 8-24 mandatory referral of related pedestrian easement. Um, this is a project that I am delighted to say has finally uh, uh, take, taken, taken hold. We actually have some significant progress. Brian, you want to bring this up to date? Okay, well, as Matt said, I mean, I, I think you've all uh, here, uh, remember I was here a few months ago to talk about the need for additional parking in around our vibrant and uh, happening green. And to that uh, end, we approached St. George to try to get some of their parking lot uh, for use. Use for merchants around the green and their employees, not really customer parking. Our goal was to try to free up real customer parking, paying people mm -hmm. in and around those spots and, and ask the merchants to, their merchant employees. So actually after a lot of discussions and really great support from Father Stephen, by the way, at St. George's Church, we, he really has worked well with us. Uh, just things take time when the, there's lawyers involved in needing to take care of all the details and everything else. So really last week Matt and I and Janice um, met with Father Stephen to sign the church agreement as the first phase of this project. So when I say the first phase, um, we needed to have that in place before we went completely towards the merchants and their employees. We've talked conceptually with the merchants. We have a second agreement drafted that the merchants will uh, sign on behalf of their employees. And it's really, it's a pretty simple um, 
rules of the road and how they go forward and how we identify merchants. And as part of this, the merchants that are participating will be assigned an, a, this merchant parking permit that will hang from their mm -hmm. dashboard. So, I mean, in the case of the marketplace, they ask us for 25 of these tags. Baloo's asked for 10. And what does that entitle the holder? This is just a way for us to identify which merchant employees are parking in the St. George lot. Uh, not that we're anticipating any significant problems or issues, mm -hmm. but should there be, we could go over. So that parking permit hanger is simply to park in a church lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. And obviously not all 25 people from Marketplace will be parking there at the same time. Right. 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 Or all 10 people from mm -hmm. Belus. Because right. <laughs> because that's been the ongoing problem. I mean, we've had this discussion 20 years ago, and, you know, you parked by the front door. Right. And that's the way right. it is. Making it's, sense. Yeah. Not, not yeah, they all do. It's so, an educational process. Right? Yeah. It, it is. It is. And um, so it's really our intention of... Uh, Ted Sands, our vice chair of the Economic Commission, and I will be visiting the merchants this week now that we have the church agreement in place. We'll be meeting again. Uh, we met with them again informally, letting them know what was coming forward and would they participate and be in agreement. So now we'll be handing out the merchant agreement um, for them to sign and participate in. What? I'm sorry. I just, I'm probably getting ahead of it. I just wonder what the schedule is for the sidewalk, because that's going to be the key, mm -hmm. is the sidewalk. Okay. Um, I'll answer it, and or Janice can jump in with me. Uh, in the process, uh, Father Stephen identified a fairly significant tree abutting where the sidewalk is going to go in that he wants to have taken down yeah. prior to us doing any work mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. He's obtained a couple of quotes. Uh, we just gave him some additional names last week if he wants to look at another. Uh, the contractor that he had talked to was like in October. So for them, to, they're busy right now. So to take down that tree, it's in the October time frame. So Janice would be lining up a contractor to do the sidewalk itself once that tree has been removed. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's felt that people could still utilize the parking spaces and just walk, you know, yeah, other but routes. You, or we've got to make it nice. We've got to right. make them want to, That's intent, you know, our get intention. that. That's intent, our intention, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that, that'll be good. I mean, if you can get it for winter and, and keep it plowed, and that, that'll that will make all the difference in the world. Now it's like creeping alongside the building. Well, there's stone there right now. Yeah. So, you know, we'll be putting in the, in the sidewalk, and then, of course, on each side we'll have the appropriate handicapped accessible ramps on and off to make it easier yeah, and safer. That's going there. to make the difference in making that easier, yeah. inviting. And will yeah. we need to add any additional lighting? No, yeah. no. There's enough lighting on the side of the building at the back of Baloo's, uh, the hair of the dog, there's mm -hmm. some flood lighting there and there's mm -hmm. some off the church and then in the church parking lot there's a substantial sure. flood light okay. as okay. well. So no. Okay, so what do you need for us? Um, approval of the uh, license agreement uh, and the mandatory referral. Uh, Pam looked at this and everything? For the related. Oh, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, very I'll, much so. I'll move it then. I'll second it. Any further uh, discussion? Is there anything else, Brian? Or we no, I. No, so at this point, then um, we have the easement that has to be acquired from the property owner who, who is, um, owns the building where Belouz is, and that's what you're referring to. Uh, planning and zoning, as well as the you know the site plan approval and for the construction field, of that. Which field and water shops? The, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're that, they're, that, they're granting the town an easement to put that they, sidewalk in. That's a relatively new owner, and he or she is they're they're fine. He's been he's been very, been very supportive okay. as well. Right. We anticipate oh, having uh, yeah. yeah, we anticipate right. having that easement signed this week. Isn't We're going to try to do that, perhaps before. even as early as this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> he he's no just pressure. coming. No, I I mean I'm going to reach out to him. Uh, talk to him. I called him last week to try to talk to him and found out he was out in the far side of Canada on a biking trip. So today's his first day back right. in. So whether he's going to, Janice and I are the first people he wants to see. <laughs> Yet to be determined. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we'll try. All right. All right. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Motion carries. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yep.
Item 10, Environmental Planner Kevin McGee. 10.1 is to consider and take possible action on conservation easement for 135 Old Quarry Road. Uh, send to the Planning and Zoning Commission for mandatory referral under the same Connecticut General Statute, uh, 824, and set a town meeting date of October 7th, 2019, at 8 a.m. at the Guilford Town Hall. Kevin. Okay, we have a request of an application currently going through Planning and Zoning Commission for the town to accept a conservation easement, 135 Oak Quarry Road. This is located at the very end of Narrows Island. Okay. Um, they're looking at splitting their lot into two segments as part of the planning and zoning approval. They're required to provide at least 10% of land um, to a um, protective um, nature or else provide a fee and to the town of Guilford. This property here, they're looking to provide a conservation easement on the end of the island here. Okay. Um, the, um, that's part of the planning and approval. Also, you're, they're required to uh, provide a note to the or review a natural diversity database map um, the DEP has. Um, if that, the area is located within a colored area, a blob they call it, um, they're required to get a letter from DEP indicating what's there and what need, how, how to protect the area. This area has been noted to have um, uh, the common term, mm -hmm. which is a species of stuff of uncertain located there. Sure. Um, so we're recommending, uh, and it's been through um, Conservation Commission and also Land Acquisition, um, of, uh, to accept this, um, recommend also to accept this as a conservation easement um, for How the protection of the piece? species. What's that? How big is it? Okay, so the, the piece itself mm -hmm. is uh, about 15,000 square feet, and the total acreage of the whole property being split is about 2.8 <coughs> acres. Mm -hmm. So it's right at the very tip of Nero's Island and there's actually a bridge that gets to access the area there. Um, this goes there. to town meeting. And it goes to town meeting. Um, planning zoning also needs to approve the subdivision. We're actually improving our steps. We've been missing the Board of Selectmen before planning and zoning, right. which is required by our, our ordinance or our ordinances there. So we're in front of you first before planning and zoning to make sure the town's willing or there's this board willingness to accept the, the easement there before it goes to planning and zoning. Uh, if there really isn't a feel of acceptance, then the engineers and the applicant would need to find another method to meet their requirements for planning and zoning. What would be the downside of accepting it? There, there is no, there is no this no one downside. here, there are no downsides for this one. Um, it's a unique piece there at the end there. Um, it's pretty much like a rocky shore front with shrub, shrubbery on the top, which provide a nice nesting area there. Uh, for the species there, it's going to be part of the um, st our standard um, conservation easement documents that will be filed for this um, property here, which is currently being reviewed by town council. Um, Any further comments or questions? Yeah. Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Sure. Name recuses. Thanks. Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. And I think the two parts is the one on the agenda. Okay, so that's yeah. correct. It's correct on the notice. Okay, yeah. Okay. 815, got it. Okay. Item 11. Park and Rec Director Rick Maynard, 11.1. .1, discuss and take possible action on request to approve Schmidt Design Group for Design and Construction Administration Services for a splash pad at Jacobs Beach. Before we get into that, Rick, uh, I want to take the opportunity to congratulate you. Um, I had the opportunity to play nine holes on the disc golf course <laughs> on uh, Saturday. After having played nine holes in the charity event for uh, the Guilford Lakes golf course uh, in the morning, so uh, I kept my shoes on. I used the same shoes for both events. But, uh, and, but what's of note is that the commission uh, took a very unusual step last week. <coughs> and the commission uh, actually dedicated uh, the course to Rick Maynard for his service to the community over these 30-odd years. Is it 30? 28. 28. 
close enough, but round up, uh, and his passion for providing our community with the best in recreational uh, opportunities. And um, I've got to say that uh, uh, right now my golf game is better than my disc golf game, uh, <laughs> but uh, practice, practice, practice. But you are, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, but congratulations, and I understand there were well over 100 folks there at the official opening. The course has been open for a while, but they had the official opening last week. So my congratulations to you and your staff on uh, on, on getting that out and, and, and working. Thanks, Matt. Very, very humbling. There were a lot of beginners there, and that was the whole idea on Saturday, to get people who have never played before to come out and try it and enjoy it and find a new sport. And um, there was a lot of good, good comments, but thank you. It was very humbling uh, for the commission to do that and almost a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, you're a modest man. Um, but uh, we're we'll going on to the next project. Hopefully, this one will make a good splash, too. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, yeah, we knew boy. that was coming. <laughs> You're all wet, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I could see a little tournament going, like maybe uh, Harvard or Howie versus Ryder and Ruoff, maybe. <laughs> 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 um, so this is Mandy Sorrentino. I, I want to ask her to come up, because this is really her brainchild. And this is a community-generated request to build a splash pad it didn't come from the Parks and Rec staff or commission. It was uh, Mandy, and uh, she has a committee of people that have been working hard to you know, look at other splash pads in other towns and came to us, and um, we, um, we got to a point where the Parks and Rec Commission totally supported this, you know, unanimously for down at Jacobs Beach. And we sent out a, a request for proposals to, I think, 10, 10 different firms, and we got three uh, quotes back. Um, the quotes were TO design for um, uh, 14,500, Schmidt Design 21,000, and Weston and Sampson 44,250. Um, and so the um, Mandy and her committee met and they, they looked at the, uh, the three proposals and uh, they, their recommendations go with Schmidt, Schmidt Design. But I think, Mandy, I mean, do you, are, you all, are you all familiar with what a splash pad is? Yes. You, you're good on that? Okay. Yeah. Mandy, do you want to maybe explain how you came up to your committee, looked at the, the different proposals? Sure. So um, we met with, actually all three that had submitted proposals, we met with in person um, prior to the RFP going out. And what we really liked about Schmidt was um, they bring to the table over 30 years of landscape design experience with a specialty in okay. splash pads. Um, but more specific than that, um, they have a lot of experience building on shoreline, in shoreline areas, um, you know, in local towns. So they pay particular attention to making sure that their design and their vision um, matches with the community that they're building within, which was really important to us. Um, when we think about a splash pad down at Jacobs, we're not looking for something large and um, full of colored piping. We're looking for something that's very natural and fits in with the um, beautiful landscape that's down there. Um, and this firm pays special attention to that type of aesthetic. Um, the, what we're doing with the water is really important to us too. Yeah. And so um, we don't want water to just go to waste. You know, we want to be smart and um, think about what's happening with that. And this firm has a really unique niche in that um, Tom Tavella is actually the um, person that we've been speaking with. He develops rain gardens, but also has really other unique ideas for using the water um, creatively to repurpose it after um, it's been used in the splash pad. And then um, what was really important to us, too, is being that it's a volunteer-led effort and we're working with a lot of people in the community, we wanted a firm that understands um, the importance of a volunteer group engaging on this and um, of the three proposals that came in this was the one that does have experience working with volunteer groups um, and really being collaborative and matching up the vision with the design did you um, have you seen any in person that they um, I haven't seen them in person um, I looked through the um, some photos that were sent through but Veronica Wallace is on our subcommittee, and she has seen them in person. She's seen, um, he built one down in Norwalk um, at Calf Pasture Park, and that's actually in a similar setting, like along um, the shore. And her feedback was that it was very well done. Um, she spoke with, I think she actually spoke with the people down um, in the town that had worked on it, and they had nothing but positive things to say about um, this group, so. Where is this group located? They are based out of Orange. So they're local, and um, Tom Tavella has, he's actually familiar with, um, with Guilford. He came down and saw the beach, and right. so I think he has a real understanding <coughs> of our community, um, and it's important to him and his design to 
right, so we're being asked to approve this group, but it's not a bid process or anything. Yeah, it was an RFP, so we sent out yeah, to, to Ted, and we got three responses. Okay. So we did the RFP process, um, and I should mention that the, the, the funding, um, the committee is going to raise all the money for this, and so it's not anything come out of town budget. Um, they did ask the Parks and Rec Commission if we could f uh, front um, the money for the um, the design while they do the fundraising. Assuming you approve it, I think they're ready to go like mm -hmm. in about 10 minutes. I think start raising the money. Uh, I think you already have a lot of commitments from people, but um, mm -hmm. so we would get reimbursed the you know the 20, 21,000, mm -hmm. and they'll do, then they'll do the fundraising once the design is done. What the actual cost of the project is they're going to raise the money for that my question is though this attachment we've got you know, the, you know there's some letters and pink note and things like that but there are no numbers so none of this has to go through the bid process or PAM or any of that kind of stuff because it is going to be a uh, reimbursement situation or well I think the, I think we followed the RFP process we did follow the RFP yeah. process yeah okay. And it's it's under bid because it's twenty one. Who's the contract? Who's the contract going to be with? Is it going to be with the town of Guilford? Is it going to be, or is it? Or I the think contract probably, has to be signed by somebody. Uh, yeah, I think the town probably met because same thing with the big belly, um, you know, the uh, trash contractors. Trash, right. um, the company said they had the business had to be with the town, not That's with right. the volunteers and raising the money. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Because we don't have any attachments to any of those kinds of effects in the book. Unless yeah. I miss it. So yeah, an exhibit yeah. showing the, yeah, the I don't three, have any. three bids. And so oh, I think okay. The well, I have, would be, um, yeah, I actually. One. With the library renovation project, a million dollars was raised outside of town funds, but the money flowed through the finance yeah, right. office. The company at that wants time. some entity, mm -hmm. and that's so, my only point. So right. Pam and everybody are comfortable with all of this? Or? Uh, I'm not sure Pam's had an opportunity to weigh in on this. She was on vacation last week when this uh, first got, the request first came through to add it to the agenda. I mean, I'll, I, I'd be willing to move it based on review right. and, and that type of thing. So. I can I can get uh, town council and Pam's access, yeah. uh, absence to yeah, take a look at it. Yeah, I guess we want to. I, I, I've got a series of questions and concerns. Um, just uh, occasionally um, you learn from previous projects like this. Uh, the first of which is, this is really just the first step, all right? There's a there's another layer of commitment that comes after this. This mm -hmm. is These are design services uh, and then potentially construction management, am I correct? Correct. So there'd be a subsequent issue of an RFP for the construction of the... Uh, no, I think we put that in there, Matt. I think construction management is part of the... Construction 21. management is different than construction. So they would actually... That's the total cost to build it is 21? No, 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 it's a design. That's design and that, overseeing the design. That's yes. what I mean. So right. there'd be a subsequent yes. uh, decision that needs to be made Correct. relative to who builds it Correct. and the costs associated with right. that. With, these, with this design work that we're going to get from this contract, this individual or firm, would they give us uh, a scale? Would they be able to say it's, it should cost you a certain amount of money? Yes. All right. And they would be advisors to us in an RFP process related. They did actually help us put together the RFP documents for the building and the splash pad. Specifications and, you know, the, the blueprints and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, second thing is, have you had or are you contemplating a public hearing on this? I think we probably would. Yes. Okay. And we would go to uh, Town Hall South, you know, once we have a... a, a we don't know exactly where it's going to go. Yeah, we have some ideas, but right. we got to have the designer say this is the best spot for it. Right. We'll go to Town Hall South with planning, and zoning staff, and engineering. You know, wetlands. How about standing perfect. building? That'd yeah. Be, I'm sorry. Standing building committee. Um, yeah, I guess we. I know it's not a building. Yeah. It just yeah. that it is. I mean, they're going to have to be some some pump facilities and things yeah. like that. So, right. I just don't want to get into what you went through with. Other project, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. so right. right. yeah, the other, well, that's the other improvements to the beach over the last ten, I, I, don't, I, I think five years, but it's probably ten. You had to go through certain um, approval processes right. then, didn't right. you? So yes. we just we just are saying we want to be sure it's that. Right. Um, I think it's a, a right. great idea. I think people will like it, but you know, it's just what you're trying to say. And quite honestly, I think it's imperative that we have. Uh, hard, we have design, mm -hmm. hard numbers when we go to the public. This is what it's going to look like, this is what it's going to cost. Right. All right? So and this is who's going to pay for this it. Is, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. All right? mm -hmm. um, 
the the next question I have here is the annual the ongoing cost of operating it uh, operating in terms of water we're going to, we're going to be using uh, Connecticut water I, I would yep. assume um, what you know what kind of cost you don't need to answer it right now and that's one of the things we did put into the RFP that they would have to give us an estimate right. of what the water cost would be. right and we're going to, we're going to be uh, yep. uh, running electricity to, to run the pumps etc mm -hmm. uh, my assumption is they're going to be an annual maintenance charge associated with whoever uh, whoever we contract uh, to do that to, to, to make sure the pumps are working mm -hmm. properly right uh, so we need to know what all the operating costs are um, and then I think those are you know those are the kind of considerations we need to go so mm -hmm. what you're asking us to do now is uh, allocate the funds uh, which we anticipate to be reimbursed to get us to a stage where we can actually bring this to the public yeah. in a full-blown fashion. Right. That's Perfect. That's what I wanted okay. to get. Yeah. And then right. my only question is how comfortable are we that, that you will be able to raise the 21000 to reimburse the town? What do you have planned for fundraising? So um, I feel pretty confident. We put out um, a soft fundraising effort in the form of pledges yeah. um, to a number of our parents in our volunteer group, mm -hmm. and that was in the form of monetary donation pledges but also purchasing bricks and so our intention is to have a significant portion of the fundraising done through a brick fundraiser similar okay. to what they've done for the playgrounds and I think they also did this for the dog park. Mm -hmm. um, we have at least 30 that have already come back as you know promises to buy bricks. Um, on top of that we intend to once we have a design um, laid out look at uh, corporate sponsorships of different elements of the splash pad um, which I think will help us also hit that number and then we have a plan to also um, include some different events which will be you know good fundraising initiatives too good. Okay. yeah I, uh, you know, to Matt's point uh, I, I, I would very much like you know this to go forward because you know I, I have a little bit of familiarity with them with the Y and that type of thing and uh, uh, I, I don't want to see a project like this get sidetracked into turmoil that some of the other projects have and that type of thing. And like I said, you, we've learned from, it's just a matter of getting our ducks in a row and uh, developing something that uh, the public is confident with and uh, I, I think it'd be a great asset, right. frankly, personally. So. Good job. So what do you need from us today? Just I, th uh, I think we're going to approve uh, the awarding of the contract to Schmidt Design for the design and uh, construction administration services uh, for the construction of a splash pad at Jacobs Beach. I think that's a so move. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. second. Call a question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Thank you for your work uh, on behalf of uh, the betterment of the community. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, whatever you have, please. Yeah. Okay. Please. Um, wonderful. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Item facilities engineer Steve Nidorf, uh, twelve point one. Uh, Steve will be discussing and taking possible action to contract with Train for the HVAC projects at the Guilford Police Department and Guilford Town Hall. Steve. Good morning. Oh, floor is yours. Good morning. Uh, I am here to ask the Board of Selectmen to waive the three price rule on uh, the two projects. First one is police department replacing all the VAV boxes for $47,265. That'll upgrade the whole HVAC side of the building. We put in new air conditioning uh, during the summer. So this whole side of that building will be all set. The only last project I'll have to do at the uh, police department is new boilers at some point. So. My request is to hire train directly, which will in the long run uh, save the town some money instead of going through a contractor. A lot of this is control related, which I have to hire train to do anyways. So if we just hire them direct, it seems to be cheaper than going through a contractor. We've done the same sort of situation at the community center. We did three phases, we did their VAVs. So this is. Sorry. The reason for skipping the process is simply it's proprietary. Yeah, it's, it's proprietary. Nice. They would have to hire a train anyways, and then you're always going to get your overhead and profit and stuff driving the yeah. costs up. Okay. Anything further? Any other questions? Um, we can approve both of them at the same time, I think. Is there a motion to uh, 
waive the uh, bid requirement uh, for contracting with train for HVAC projects at the Guilford Police Department and Guilford Town Hall uh, at the cost as represented in the documentation we've been provided. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none? Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, item 13. Um, discussion regarding the establishment of an annual 9-11 observance. Uh, last week I got a call from my good friend Steve Spurrell, uh, one of the, who served on the Board of Finance for a number of years. Um, also has, uh, was a former Guilford police officer and is a veteran as well. Uh, he asked, how come Guilford does not have a, an annual 9-11 uh, observance? And I didn't have a good answer for him. Um, other than the fact to say that, well, because there hasn't been a, a, a move or a drive or someone spearheading it. And I said, Steve, would that be you? <laughs> and he said, yes, it would. Um, so uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to establish, uh, um, at least uh, make a commitment to establishing uh, a 9 11th of, uh, observance uh, by establishing a committee uh, or uh, to do so with uh, Steve Spurrell uh, to identify yeah. potential members of that committee. And then we'll, of course, add uh, town representatives as needed. Now, Well, that, I think we, you know, it's not only town, but church and VFW and that type of thing. I, I agree. I mean, it's I a, trying to figure out the mechanics of what we as a, you know, 100% you know, supportive, obviously, right. but to make it a town we're just doing it to, to give it some credibility. That exactly. That's all I'm doing. Right. That's mm -hmm. what some it's organizational type thing. All, okay. all I'm asking. All I'm asking. Yeah. I think we've had some at landmark years, like in the fifth anniversary, the tenth That's anniversary, right. and the fifteenth. So, but it has not been when somebody else annual. stepped up to the plate, right. whether it be you know. right. Mm -hmm. So, how would this? I mean, if we establish this this year, right. what happens next year? It's, well, that's it's something that needs to be sustainable, and I think that's what, if I if we authorize, not authorize, but um, if we bless Steve's efforts to pull something together mm. uh, to create uh, an annual observance that is a grassroots uh, organization as opposed to the town doing it, we will certainly contribute staff time and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and so forth. So it's just. Um, it, I'm looking for your uh, your approval to allow Steve to move forward to do this and something that because uh, it's going to involve something on the town green most likely. Um, I don't anticipate it's going to involve town resources uh, funds, uh, but so. I'm in favor of doing this. I just wanted to ask, what are the other annual observance observances of this nature well, that we do? Memorial we Day, do. Mm -hmm. uh, Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. We do something. Um, uh, we do. Uh, um, Pearl Harbor Day. There's an event on at the, the Marina on Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, Veterans Day, there's mm -hmm. always uh, an event on the green. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have our parade and, uh, on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen uh, the last couple of years, the Lions uh, have done a Flag Day ceremony that I've participated in. Um, and that, you know, that, that's the model I think I want to see is the flag that in. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Memorial Day Parade is orchestrated and run and paid for by the, uh, uh, the veterans. Yeah. Um, and as is uh, the um, the other two, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor Day uh, and, and uh, Veterans Day, mm -hmm. um, and then there's also another uh, observance we do. It's the wreath program, mm -hmm. every, uh, where every Pearl every Harbor, Harbor, Pearl Harbor right. that, that's, that's part of the Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. Day. That's usually done on a Saturday. It doesn't necessarily always align. Mm -hmm. So, is this it, a motion yeah. thing or just no, just, just support and, yeah. and, and, okay. and, and just. Just tacit approval that yeah. you know, this is mm -hmm. something we we think is important enough to yeah. lend our support to. Definitely, yeah, my support. The other, yeah, the yeah. other interesting thing about this is that um, the other events are, are military oriented. I'm right. all in favor of those, but this is also focused on the first responders okay. who are our people. Our people, that's right. So, so that's exactly. Yeah. Good point, sir. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, no action required there, other than your your approval. Yeah. Um, Item 14, appointments and resignations. 14.1, act on a resignation received from Linda Sofer from the Youth and Family Services Board. Is there a motion with uh, appreciation and regret? So moved. 
Second. All right. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Recusals. Hearing none. Motion carries. 14.2. Act on resignation received from Mia Samsel from the Safe Streets Task Force. Also, uh, with appreciation and regret. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Recusals. Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 15, uh, Charlie, you want to make a motion to approve all together? Yeah, <laughs> uh, move that we approve uh, the following requests. Uh, country school for an event taking place on October 27th. Uh, Vista Life Innovations place a sign on the green uh, for an event October 6th and October 27th. Uh, Guilford Arts Center uh, to use the green for July 17th through the 29th in 2020. Okay, that's a big one. That's more than a sign, but right. big deal. lock up the dates at this point. Right. All right, and uh, Madison Art Society, uh, their art show taking place on October 5th through the 31st. And that's just a sign, though. That's yes. just a okay. Good. All right. Uh, okay. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the green, is that correct? The 17th or the 29th? No, oh, okay. It's, it's not yeah. normally 12 days. No, okay. Days. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> with that uh, correction. With that correction. Good. Uh, any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Recusals. Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 16, committee reports. No updates on housing at this Not point. Anything at this moment. Okay. Um, correspondence. Uh, I didn't have anything specific. We have our building department monthly report and public works monthly report for your uh, reading pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, item uh, 18, old business. Anybody? 19, new business. 20, uh, public forum. Anyone who wishes to address the board in public forum? Yes. Gary McElhenney, 411 Norton Town Road. Since this is the last uh, televised meeting before the meeting I'm about to announce, I just wanted to let people know that on October 3rd at 7 o'clock in the community center, the Guilford Facilities Task Force will be holding a public forum. So any and all are willing to come. Uh, we will review what the task force has done, the mission, what it's done to date, it, and open it up for public comment. So uh, everybody is invited. Again, it's October 3rd, Thursday night at 7 o'clock at the Community Center. Thank you, Gary. Anyone else wish to address the board? Um, we've got item 21, which is discussing takes possible action <coughs> on negotiations regarding a town property and executive session will be required. Uh, is there a motion to go into executive session? So second. Or, second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Who are we inviting? We're inviting Gary McElney in uh, and Kevin McGee. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back just to adjourn. And we'll come, we'll come back just to adjourn. Just to adjourn. So. And I do have to leave. All right. Is there a motion to go back, uh, to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusal hearing. That motion carries. Uh, as a result of our discussion, uh, is there a motion to authorize the Land Acquisition Commission to proceed uh, with an appraisal and the appropriate environmental studies on the property we discussed, as well as open up initial discussions discussing the right of first refusal with the property owner? Uh, so moved. Second. Call, uh, in, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you both. That was a busy meeting. <laughs>